Hi guys, so today's From the Vault is a little video that um, I had put together when I live in Monterey, so probably at least seven, eight years ago. Um, and it was to make a box, and basically the box will hold pictures if you want, you know, just to ha kind of have them ready for like another project or like you're making a scrapbook and these are the things I want to include. Maybe it's a little gift. Um, I think it was really fun. So what's funny is I have the boxes still. I made one that looks like Disney because it has all my Disney pictures in it for those many albums and albums I was working on. And I have one that was like just Halloween stuff and I figure again you can use it for whatever but maybe have Halloween pictures in there that you're gonna scrapbook. And so what I like about this video is um, I kind of went over it again and I think I was pretty clear. Um, I had numbers and things, you know, written out for you guys. And it's like a portfolio thing, but you're gonna get your hands dirty and make a box, which is always fun. I, When I was a kid, I used to do things like this. So, I mean, this is decades ago, right? Just for fun, like you would just put paper with like pieces of, you know, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, like cereal box and you would make like a little box kind of thing. Hold on, guys, guys. Miranda started playing Roblox, she's five years old, and now her brain is like gamer brain, and she's just upset over there about something. Oh, this is not good. We need to get back to homeschooling. But anyhow, um, the box is really fun. So I wish I had the other ones. I know they're, they're here somewhere in this room, if not in my garage, but I s could swear I saw them here when I was kind of rearranging things. But anyway, uh, you'll see in the video what I'm talking about. So you'll need chipboard, you'll need um, cardstock. Basically, that's it. Or you can, you know, double up, triple up pieces of um, again, cereal box or whatever is that you use instead of um, chipboard. But uh, I think it's fun. It shouldn't take too long. It was filmed on a you know HD camera, but I don't know how low res it is. But it's it's okay. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this from the vault uh, tutorial. Hey okay, everyone. So to get started with our box, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting um, our pieces of chipboard and paper. And this is one 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. Now this is the one that comes, like I said, in the um, color book set that comes from Joann's where they have like several, oh what's that? I just noticed on the camera it's a discoloration there. Um, it comes with several of the, you know, just brown cardstock or chipboard should I say, natural and then some white and some black. The white and the black are just thick cardstock, they're not really chipboard, I don't even know why it says that because they're very thin. But this is uh, a lightweight chipboard. Uh, the one I showed you on the intro is this thicker chipboard that's an 8.5 by 11, um, got from eBay a long time ago and I think I've already done videos about that but um, I went ahead and I'm just going to use the one piece and if one piece of 12 by 12 you can make your whole box so it's pretty good. Um, it's so funny I was going to sit down my son just fell asleep I'm like yes I'm going to get this video going and I can't find my craft knife because my husband used it and I guess he ran away with it and I can't find it so this is a new one that I've been holding on to that I need to use anyhow so uh, the EK Success retractable knife and blades. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm not even sure what I'm doing, but supposedly you can fill it without having to touch the blades. You put the new blade is on this side and you're going to screw it on, and then when you're done, I guess you put it on this back side and you unscrew it, and then you never have to touch the blade itself, so it's a little more safe. So let me see. Hopefully what I'm saying is true. I don't know. I don't even know how to open the thing. It looks like it swivels back, but it's not doing it for me. There we go. Okay, so you have to open it up here. And you're going to take your um, assembly here or your, your um, what do you call this? I don't know what you want to call it. I thought it would, okay, I see. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. Um, see, it clicks open and clicks shut. So right now it's too far away from the thing, so i got to click it to bring the assembly down here. And then I guess you can go in and screw it in. Hopefully it's clockwise, counterclockwise. I don't know what way you're supposed to screw this thing in. It looks like it's the other way. Let me mess with this for a few seconds and then I'll... Oh, there it goes. I was going to say, if I'm, I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> but here it goes. I screwed it in. And then you just bring it out. Oh, that's kind of scary. So, there it is. And then you can retract it. It goes right back in. Okay, so... After all of that... We'll see how it works. Okay, so what I did here on my 12 by 12 piece of paper is I, I wouldn't have written these numbers on here, but I just wanted to show you guys how you can cut it so that um, all your the pieces you're going to fit out in here. The box itself is five and a half by six and a half inches, so five and a half wide, six and a half inch tall. So you can have plenty of room in there for your for your pictures that are like four by six, right? Or recipe cards or anything else you want to store in it, and it'd be great. So if you measure into your 12 by 12 piece. Six and a half inches in, and make a line like I have here, 
all you're gonna do from there is measure five and a half inches and then another five and a half inches that's gonna be your box front and your um, box back okay so two squares that are five and a half by six and a half inches and you're gonna have this little piece extra and you actually want to hold on to that. We'll show you what I'm going to do with that later. You're going to need it to measure with. And then you're going to need one um, rectangle that's five and a half by three inches. So what's kind of cool is that when you measure six and a half inches over, you're going to have this piece. And what's left is five and a half inches wide anyway. And that's what you need because your boxes, the dimensions kind of run around that. So you're going to need a five and a half inch by three inch piece. And you're going to need two five and a half inch by three and a half inch pieces. So I measured those out there, okay? So just to make this smaller, I know it's kind of in the way there of the screen. And you know, like I said, I don't usually make marks. I would just start cutting, but that's just kind of giving you an idea how you're gonna cut. So this um, is a We Are Memory Keepers magnetic mat, self-healing mat and uh, ruler. So it's kind of cool that it's magnetic. Right now it's not doing the best job because of the thickness of the chipboard. And I'm gonna take my craft knife. Ooh, let's see. Yeah, this is really sharp. I can feel it's really getting into the into the mat. <laughs> okay, so with one cut, got that cut. It's not the thickest chipboard either, so. Um, so now I'm going to cut my five and a half inch by three inch piece off. Okay, a little bit crooked there, but that's okay. And there are two pieces that are five and a half by three and a half, right? I'm going to have to cut this other one again. I did it really way off the line there, but there they are. As you can see, one's a little bit different than the other one, so I'm going to need to trim those up. And now we need our two pieces that are five and a half by six and a half inches. And this doesn't take very long, as you can see. Just kind of... That's already cut. Oh, nope. One more. I wasn't pushing hard enough there. And here we go. Okay, so there are all our pieces. And if you're using two eight and a half inch pieces, um, you're just gonna have to come up with those numbers on your own. But basically, you're just gonna have to, you know, measure out kind of like I did, and you're just gonna need three, two pieces of uh, chipboard. Um, so there's that. Let's put this away so I don't cut myself. And for the inside, the next thing I'll be cutting are these pieces um, of the cardstock. And this is really simple. You're going to need three pieces of cardstock, and all you're going to do is come in half like if you're making an A2, your standard size card. So I chose some craft paper. I thought since I'm using Halloween paper, that would be the nicest, or it would look nice. So I'm going to use three pieces of that. If you're using whatever you need to coordinate with your, with that, your book. So I'm using those. And I'm going to bring out my big guy because... I still haven't bought blade refills for my, um, just my regular trimmer. And we're going to cut these at five and a half inches. Okay, there we go. And, sorry about that. So now you have six pieces of your cardstock here. And I'm going to have to bring out, here we go. It's so funny, I like working at home because I have everything in front of me. It's all here, you know, and I keep thinking, okay, I need to stop, I need to pause and go grab this or go grab that, and I don't. It's all right here. So what you're going to do with your pieces of cardstock, each piece, is you're going to give it two score lines so that you can fold it. And if you can see that, um, okay, like on this back, this back one is probably the best you can see. You're going to fold in both sides and it's going to make like a pocket that way. So then this one layers on top of that one, that one on top of that one, and so on. So here you go. And what I did is I'm going to score it so that so that you have five inches in this middle part here. So anyway, sorry, to make that assembly, you're going to have to um, fold or score one and three quarter inches in from each side, okay? Because one three quarters times two is three and a half, and then you have your five inch middle. So, hopefully, you can follow along with that. So, one and three quarters is right here. So, on all of your pages, you're gonna just do that and just score it. 
Okay, you just go through and score all six of them at one and three quarters from both edges, okay? So I'm gonna do that to all my pages, and when we come back, we'll okay, make that So let's go ahead and put that aside. I'm just gonna keep my bone folder out that comes with it. And so now you're just gonna fold it however you'd like, if it's inwards, outwards, on those one and three quarter inch marks. They're both gonna come in the same way. So it's like this little gatefold, but you have a spot in the middle, okay? On all of them. I probably should have done that off camera also. I'm so silly. Anyway, so here we go. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to tape them um, or glue them together. I used ATG on that last, on the first box I made there. Um, I still haven't bought any ATG refills. Let's try to see if I have a, a tape here that I can use. I'm doing this kind of fast, like I missed that one, but. Uh, let's make sure that's one and three quarters. Sometimes you'll start folding them and then you're like, hey, that doesn't look quite right because you probably, or like I do, um, didn't measure it quite right. You went to like one and a half instead of one and three quarters or whatever. So hopefully all these guys are okay. And let me see if I have my little red tape here somewhere. Sorry, I still have things packed from when I went to my mom's house. So if you have a tape runner, you can use that, um, wet glue, however you'd like. But what you're gonna do with the wet glue is so that you can't control it, so when you squeeze it down, it might squeeze out into this area and you don't want it there, or you might squeeze out further so you're not gonna have the same, you know, pocket openings. So the this kind of glue is better for that. Um, what I'm gonna do is right on the very edge, I'm sorry, I hit my camera, on both sides is just run your glue right down that edge okay so it's just here you can see that on both sides and then you're going to take one of your other little assemblies and you're going to kind of hold it down with your fingers oh, let's get in the camera right here and the next one you want to what I usually do is just line it up with one side making sure the top and the bottom are straight and then just let it come on over and then you can bone fold that if you want just to you know get that nice and down and there you go so there's your first pocket if you can see that okay and then you're gonna have the openings the same on both sides so here's the next one again it's open and we're just gonna continue to stack them till you get to the last one okay and then we're gonna put this aside because um, we need to actually cover our box and all that good stuff so again lay this one right on top Nice and even, and this is the piece that I told you I didn't quite fold it quite right, so I'm gonna fix that. When I was bone folding it, when I was reinforcing that, I reinforced it like an eighth of an inch larger than it should be. Okay, so there it is. And continue doing that until you get to the last one, okay? Just continue stacking them up. Okay, all here's six. my last one. And this last one is just going to stack right on top, just like you've been doing. And I just kind of push that down. That was a little bit crooked, also. Now, I've already built in some fudge factor on this, let me tell you, because this um, assembly is going to be a little bit smaller than the inside of your box as you can see there's a lip here so if this is a little bit off as far as you know when you stack them some are sticking out just a little bit further or not it's not gonna matter they're not gonna stick out the side of the box so you're good to go and I like to do that with all my projects just because you never know <laughs> things might shift around I don't know so your assembly's gonna look like this okay so you have like complete pocket a few of them and then at the end you have these two flaps still sticking out and we're gonna put that aside so we're gonna, we're gonna use that later Right now what we're going to do is cut the paper for the inside of our box and that we're going to actually be using to wrap around your box, okay? So for this inner lining, all it is is one piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and you're just going to cut it right in, well not right in half because you need it um, to be 5 inches wide. As you can see this whole thing is 5 and a half inches wide so I left like a quarter inch all around so you need your page to be 5 inches wide by 12. So what I'm going to do is pick a couple of pages 
Actually, what I need to do is pick the paper I'm going to be using anyway. So let's see here. Um, I will choose... I really like this black, or this kind of cool... I think I'm going to use both of these papers. So it has the orange on the back and then also this like candelabra or chandelier paper uh, for the outside of the wrap, the, the, the uh, box. So I'm going to need maybe, I guess I can just go with black for the inside. Okay, so this one piece of paper, I'm going to cut it um, to 5 by 12. And then we'll start talking about how we need to cut the rest of the papers in the next section, okay? Okay, so this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky because um, I already cut for the inside of my book, or my um, case, the five and a half by, no, I'm sorry, the five by 12 inch strips. So it's going to be lined in black on the inside. But for, to cover your chipboard and for the outside of the book, you need to think about how you want to place your paper so that, um, let me show it this way, so that this flap, um, you know, is what you want, and then what's coming up on this side all the way around to the back is how you want it. So on this one, I use three different sheets of paper. There's this one that has the little arrows and things, and it ends right in the back here. And then there's a kind of a plain piece that comes up around the top, and then at the very top, I have this, um, like, um, Disney, you know, balloons. Um, and I really liked what I was looking at at that point. That's why it has, like, the... Disney top here and it shows like Mickey with like the fireworks and all that so you really want to choose your paper and think okay how do I want this to look so as I'm looking at this paper I really like this design here with the bird and the gate but it's kind of kind of difficult to get it onto my paper the way I want it so I'm gonna have to think about that for a minute and then cut my paper accordingly but basically you're gonna cut your paper so that's six and a half inches wide because you're gonna wrap it it's gonna go around the front and then wrap around to the back a little bit. So I'm leaving half an inch on each side to wrap around, which is plenty of paper. Um, a quarter inch is just too too little, but half an inch is about good. If you're really afraid, you can do one inch around each side that's gonna wrap around and then you'll need to cut your paper at like seven and a half inches wide. So I'm going to choose what I want. Um, I am gonna use this garden, this gate one for the back, so I really don't care. That one can be cut anyway. It's just gonna be cut at six and a half inches wide by 12. But as far as this orange one, I'm going to think about it for a minute and then when I come back I'll have it cut only because I'm not sure exactly how I want to arrange that, so okay? I'm trying to explain this as clear as I can because it gets kind of confusing. You need to have enough paper to wrap around this whole thing in one piece basically to measure about 26 inches by um, six and a half. Uh, wide, right? Because we were talking about the width, you need to be about six and a half inches wide so that you can wrap it around your card, your um, chipboard. And the length of this whole thing all together is about um, just under 26 inches. So you need at least 26 inches of car of uh, your cardstock or whatever that you're using um, your decorative papers. Now I cut my first piece of paper and I messed it up, so I had to pick something else. But I like this one actually better because it's a larger print and it kind of goes better with this orange. So it's okay. So these are six and a half by 12 inches. They're just the regular 12 by 12 inch paper that I cut. So that I have a six and a half, two six and a half inch pieces. Um, I'm going to try to, when I come back, because what I'm going to do is bring out my sewing machine. Because if you can see on this, I have a little bit of stitching holding the papers together because I thought that would be cute instead of just being one paper to the next. Um, so what I'm going to do is stitch them together. You don't have to do that. You can just put one in the other. I'm going to actually cut this last little piece um, because obviously these two pieces only measure about 24 inches when you put them together and there's a little bit of overlap. Um, this is another like two and a half inch piece of just black that I'm going to be using um, at this bottom piece, okay? So um, I'm gonna kind of move up a little bit so you can see that better and then we'll get started with some stitching and then we'll start assembling our uh, book as far as our, our what do you call it a book? Okay, so our box. my little okay. Singer Pixie I picked up like at um, what's that place called? Big Lots um, for like $29, which is really good. They still sell, I think, at Walmart for maybe $39 or $49. Just a little purple machine. I'm sorry I had to come to this other table because my um, cord wouldn't reach. But what I'm going to do with the black piece of um, cardstock is just punch with the Martha Stewart lace punch. Just a little bit off of there because I think that'd be cute just to have like a little bit of lace, something feminine. So I'm going to put flowers and all this other stuff when I make the closure for this. So I thought, why not? Let's just include something a little more like this. And hopefully I'm not cutting off too much off my piece of paper. So if you're going to do this, I would recommend to have cut your piece of paper a little bit bigger. Maybe I'm going to have to end up doing that. But 
um, like at three and a half, just so that you have enough paper to go around uh, and extra. Because if you have too little and then you sew it like I'm gonna do, you're gonna be very sorry. <laughs> so this paper is gonna go around my box and around the top, and this piece is gonna be at the very front. So what I'm gonna do is just line it up just so that my little lacy part here is just over that piece because I don't want to waste too much paper but I need this to actually get sewn so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put my stitch to make a straight stitch um, and not a really tight straight stitch because you don't want to end up perforating your paper and just ripping the paper so that wouldn't be good. And this thing is so funny I mean it's just a little toy if you turn on the light it's right here. Ooh, I don't know if you even noticed that's a lot of light coming through. It's not very much of anything and my paper or what I'm stitching with is orange thread and that's just because I couldn't find my black and I wasn't going to spend the time right now to look for it so I'm going to hopefully hold those together and try and stitch a nice straight line stitching on paper isn't the easiest thing ever but um, it's doable so let me try and get that started something's getting stuck here let me see what's wrong Let's try that again, and bring this down. And that one, I just did a straight stitch because um, um, on the other one that I had shown you, I did a zigzag, but um, I didn't want it kind of interfering with the design of the, the lace, so I'm gonna pull that out. Just cut that off. It's not the straightest stitch ever, but kind of cute. Gives a little more something. So this is going to wrap around my book. This is going to be the very lip of it. Around the box, sorry. Coming down. This next one is going to have to be sewn upside down, okay? Because what you're going to do is this is where it's going to end, and it's going to wrap around to the front of your book, okay? If that makes um, sense. So you really want to sew it upside down is what you're going to do. So this is the back... Oh my gosh, I don't know how best to show you. The back, the very front of the book, uh, the box going around, this is the inner where you're going to stick it to your chipboard. And it's going to come down, and this is the base of your, this would be right here, the base of your book, of your <laughs> box, and then it's going to come up to the front. So that's why you want to do it upside down. Otherwise, it's going to be upside down when you do actually flip it up to go to the front of your book, okay? I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to see. But, so now I'm going to sew right across here where these two things meet. And since this is kind of long, I'm going to kind of roll it because with paper you're able to do that. And just get these two guys together as straight as I can. Takes a little finessing. Okay. Come on. Here we go. I need to get under this plate so I can actually close it and then I'll be good. makes any sense. See, I struggle, we all struggle. Sewing isn't the funnest thing to do with your <laughs> um, crafting project sometimes, but it adds a lot of character. I like it. Okay, so I think right there is good. I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to be able to kind of mess with this. Alright, here we go. I'm going to have to hold on to this thing while I'm pushing. That's going to be interesting. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get started. And that way, maybe once it's in, then now I can push it in. There we go. Alright, and try to keep it straight. Okay, and I'm going to go over it one more time. Um, and I'll tell you why, because I did want that to be a zigzag. I forgot to just change it so it's still a straight stitch. But I'm going to go over it with a zigzag. Just go right over that same where I did it. Really, you want it to the zigzag to be right over where you overlapped your papers, okay? So I'm going to do that, and then we'll come back and okay. complete our... So that wasn't too confusing, but now I have this big, long strip of paper. If you have that um, long paper, maybe it might work that Cricut paper that they're selling for the expression, you know, that longer piece. But So here I have that little piece that has the doily lace cut out, and then here we go to here with some um, stitching that came out not too great because I was just 
I'm kind of in a hurry. I want to get this done. My son's taking a nap and he only sleeps so long. So what you're going to do is turn it over so that the stitch side to side you don't want, the pieces that you don't want are facing up. And this is going to be the top of my um, box, okay? So this top part here, what I call the top, the flap. So from there, what you're going to do is this piece of um, chipboard is the five and a half by three inch piece of chipboard which is this one, I have it marked five and a half by three inches, is gonna be right at the very tip there, okay? Because that's gonna be that part of it. And then the next one that's gonna be in order is the five and a half by three and a half. I should probably leave them up this way. I know it's kinda of hard to see it anyway, but it's gonna be your five and a half by three and a half, which is this top part. So if this were laid out, this is what basically what we're working on right now, okay? If this was open up like this. So you have five and a half by three, five and a half by three and a half, and you're gonna have your larger piece that's five and a half by six, and then you're gonna have another piece right down here, the base of the box that's five and a half by three and a half. And then the very front of your box, which is gonna be five and a half by six and a half piece, okay? So I just laid them out so you can kind of have an idea of how that's gonna be. And we're gonna start with the five and a half by three inch piece. And if you wanna use ATG, whatever glue you wanna use to glue this down, it's up to you. So I am going to add the glue to my chipboard. If you're gonna do ATG, you just ATG it real well. Um, a lot of people like glue sticks for this kind of thing. You can do that. However you want, I'm just really loading it up with glue. Uh, I probably would use a glue stick only because from the last one I did, it kind of bubbled a little bit, but if you don't have any air bubbles, then you shouldn't have a problem. But you're gonna place that so that you leave about, you know, um, your half inch sides and, you know, half, a quarter to a half an inch at the top. And I'm just gonna hold that down for a little bit. That's the only thing with wet glue is that it can warp your paper. So um, you want, you want to use a fast drying glue. And if I had more ATG, I probably would just use my ATG because I like that better. Cause now I'm gonna have to kind of wait for this to dry before I can go on to the next couple steps. But the next one, when you glue this down, you're gonna glue it so it's half inch from the other side and two widths of your chipboard away from the last piece that you glued down. So that's what I'm saying, if you have your little pieces of chipboard, just to hold on to them. Um, it was just these two little pieces. Because what you're gonna do is layer two of them together. So I have these two pieces right next to each other. And I'm gonna lay that right in here. And then the next one is gonna be glued that far away, okay? Because that way when you come over to fold it over later, you're not, make it so it's gonna end up tearing, okay? So you want at least two pieces of chipboard, but not too much, because then you don't want it to be real flappy either, like really flip floppy. So I'm gonna load this up with glue. Also, and I'm doing it kind of thinly, like I said, I don't want my paper to warp. Okay, and I'm gonna get my little guide. So I have at least two pieces of chipboard separating them. And glue it down. The last thing you want to do is end up gluing this and then having it tear because oh that's just so disheartening. I mean you can start over again but you know if you're already getting it going it's sad when it doesn't work out. So I'm going to continue gluing these pieces down just like I did. Uh, two pieces away from each one till I get to the end and we'll come back so at that So I just stuck point. down my last piece here. So what you're going to do at the very corners um, at the front and at the back is just kind of trim that not real close to the edge of your of, of your chipboard, but not too far either. You're gonna leave like a little maybe eighth inch away from that because when you fold it over, you don't want all that bulk there. And you're gonna do the same thing for the other edge. This one, the little lip came out a little bit bigger. That's okay, I just leave that extra paper. If there's a lot more than half an inch, I just leave it. Doesn't hurt. So what you're gonna do at this point is what we call train your paper. You're gonna kind of fold it up. If you wanna bring this up like this and fold it so that the paper starts folding because you're gonna bring it around the edge of your chipboard, okay? And the reason you kind of do this is because you want it to flatten out on that very edge. I know your chipboard's not, you know, super thick. Well, at least mine isn't, but you still want it to kind of come around real nice and tight. And so for this part, you do want ATG or some kind of glue that's gonna hold it pretty much instantly um, to hold it nice and tight, okay? I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing. Let me close up just a little bit. It's always hard to guess, like, is it better to close up this much or not much or, you know. So we're gonna do the same thing for both sides. Just really train that edge to come around 
and be nice and flush against that that little edge there. Okay, across the whole thing, because you want it to be nice and crisp. And this is kind of how you make like a book binding when you make your books or your binders for your mini albums and things. You just want to really get it right in there. And I'm going to use this duck. I wouldn't recommend this. I would rather use my ATG brand glue for this, but since I don't have it with me, we're going to use this and we're going to say it's going to work just fine. So I'm going to put, you can put the glue on the actual flap if you prefer to, all the way down and across. Let me cut these guys off. Um, but I would do all one side and then another, so I just did that a little bit crooked, a little backwards, sorry. You really want to get close to the edge of where your chipboard and your and your paper meet. And that's just so that you won't have too much of a gap there. You don't want it to kind of get really bubbly there. So starting at one edge, I would come down and with my bone folder, come in right behind it and really, really, really get that laid in there, okay? You can see what I'm doing. So I'm kind of burnishing that so it's nice and flat. Okay, all across. I'm kind of pushing it in, making sure that I have this nice crisp edge on the very side of my book and pushing it in towards the whole thing, okay? So I'm gonna do the same on the other side and then um, okay. we'll come back. And the same for our very little edges here, the very top and the bottom edge. You're gonna do those last because it just looks neater to kind of bring that in over the parts that you already stuck down. And I'm gonna trim this little piece of string there and this time I'm going to put it here only because it's such a small piece and it's just easier for me to do it that way. And we're going to bring it up and again with our bone folder just kind of really stick that down. Okay so you have this nice crisp um, folded edge okay and we're going to do the same thing for this back side and this part's going to get covered with your lining so like I said since this piece is kind of longer than the rest of it it's not going to really hurt anything we're going to cover that up anyway but if it bothers you you can always trim it down it's not going to make a difference okay so now what we can do is kind of start folding this just to kind of train it and say, okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be folding this way, okay? Kind of give it a little, a little close kind of. So actually, if I back up, let me see if I can do that. I can show you. This is your top. This is the very, or your flap, the top, the back side, your base, and this piece here. So this is basically the box. Not too shabby, huh? Look, came out pretty cute. Um, and see, it's empty right now. So now what we're gonna do is come in and I need to put more, I'm gonna put some liquid glass right here cause it's kind of coming up. Um, I brought my liquid glass cause it dries really fast. So it's another good alternative to this kind of stuff. Um, is we're gonna get our two pieces of the cardstock that we cut at um, five, and oh, we cut it at 5 by 12 and basically you're going to overlap them because if you can see this one only reaches so far and then from here this is actually the base of your actually this is the base of your book so this is the back part so people aren't going to see it at all you're going to overlap the next one and let that go out to cover the front okay and so I'm going to stick this down um, just with my craft bond again. I would probably be using ATG for this. But what you're gonna do is, see this is what, you kinda have to decide how you wanna do it. If you wanna glue on your pa on your box, you're gonna have to really know where you're putting this. But if you glue it on your paper, you're just a little more, you already have a better idea of where your glue needs to go. But I would go all around the edges. And if this is ATG, I do exactly the same way, go all around the edges. And then I'm also going to put some glue here on all these 
And I think that's about as far as this one goes anyway. So I just spread glue all around. And uh, this one has it all around the edges. So I'm going to square this up with about a quarter of an inch in from the edges all around. And bring her straight down, okay? Now this is a dry glue, like your ATG. You could pretty much immediately after you do these two steps, after you apply this and then the next piece, you could just um, go ahead and train your your thing to fold over. I'm gonna have to wait till it's completely dry since it is a wet glue. So I have that one down, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing for this other side, and just put my glue oops, on the very edges. And this will probably be a good place to take a break anyhow for the next part because. Um, we still need to make our front and um, and then add our, our assembly um, for the actual little pockets next. So again, a quarter inch from around all the edges and line them up as best you can. Oops. And I'm just going to be massaging this for a minute until it really stays down and looks nice and crisp. And then when we come back, I'll show you what I mean by training them. And then we're going to put it in our assembly and decorate the front. Okay, everyone. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out the best angle to videotape this thing since it's so long, but, you know. So it's been drying. I kind of kept it under um, my mat here, like underneath to get some pressure on it. So there's the front flap and all the way back around to the front again. And so what we're gonna do now is again, kind of train it a little bit. So starting here, you can kind of feel where that next spot's supposed to be. And I probably should have done this, uh, to be honest, when the glue was still a little bit wet because now I'm having a little bit of bubbling, but that's okay, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is kind of push it in where I feel that. That way it knows to go in there and not popping out, okay? So just kind of feel to where your next um, crease should be and kind of push your paper into that spot. And what's good about the front and the back are these bigger panels that they're gonna be covered anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but that's kind of where, when you're gluing, you really want to make sure, like with a glue stick, to get every single inch of your, your paper. So here we are, again the box. I think I showed it to you in the last time that there it is. But now it's lined. And I'm just trying to think if the best thing would be to decorate this now while it's flat or just to go ahead and go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and go for it because I want to show you guys how to finish this up. So now we have our box and then we have our assembly, right? The thing that we had put together for the accordion for the inside of the box. And basically what you're going to do, how I did mine is I put this to face towards the back. Only because that's the last page and you're not going to see that there's an opening here so much. If that really bothers you, what you can do is just put another piece of brown paper in between there to kind of close the gap or whatever. And then this front one is going to stick here. Okay? So when you open it, you have that same, like I've been showing you. Now, this for me is ATG time because it's going to be pulling open. It's going to have to be held that way. But like I said, I don't have much if any. I don't think I have any on this thing, but I'll, I'll look. So what you're going to do is a couple things. Um, I have best describe this. Okay, see where all these little, the one and three quarter inch flaps end? That's basically where you're going to line up your, your glue. I kind of did it that way so that way they all look the same instead of, um, let me show you on this one. Instead of having this one go all the way to the tip and be glued down all the way. I did so that they all look the same, you know? They all have that same gap. So what you're gonna do is kind of feel that out. It's about right here. And take your ATG and just run it straight down. And on the other side too. And I ran it across the top from that little gap, just where you're putting your ATG along the bottom. And then some more kind of in the middle. You really want this to be adhered really super well. And so what you're gonna do is take your base. Again, this is the very front lung side. This is your base right here, and this is your back side, right, with the flap. Okay, so you're gonna stick it to the front. So what you're gonna do is, I like mine touching the bottom of the, touching the base. If you want it up a little bit higher, you can do that, but there's no need for that, and it's, it looks better when it's just all the way down. So what you're gonna do is basically kind of bring it in 
and center it. Cause this is gonna be five inches wide. Your black by, um, cover here is five inches wide. So you're just gonna I, make sure that that's, you know, centered within there so that they're kind of lined up and then just squeeze it down. And I'm gonna lay it down flat now. And I don't know where my bone folder is, so I'm just gonna use the back of this glue. And just make sure that that is really nice and adhered. You really wanna push down there, okay? Across the top. Um, if you wanted to, before this step, um, if you wanted to cut little grooves in here, like with a circle punch, a half circle, you know, you can do that just for an added cuteness, but I'm okay right now. I just left it the way it is. So now again, we're also gonna put ATG on these last two flaps, just like we did when we stacked them up on top of each other, right? Um, well, I used a different glue, but since I have a little ATG left, I'm gonna use that because I really want it to be durable. And on this one, you can um, go a little further out or however, whatever you think is what you need for it to be especially sturdy, okay? And then you're gonna bring this guy up. Sorry, this side. This is your very back. And this is where it gets not tricky, but you, you're gonna have to bring it close to here. If you can see that. And what I do is I'm gonna hold it kind of flat. I have my fingers in the ridge here, and in the other ridge over here. And I'm gonna make sure it's lined up before I press real hard. Okay? I hope you were able to see that. It was kind of hard for me to, to show. I have something over here. And you can kind of go in there. I'm kind of getting my bone folder in there. See how that one side didn't quite stay. And I'm going to stick that down real well and make sure that happens with the other side too. So this takes a little finessing also. Sorry, keeps closing up. And I just wanna make sure that's okay at the bottom. Okay, and if it laying down helps, do that. However you need to get it so that you can get your hand in there um, to lay this down flat. And I think that's probably the better option if I should do that to begin with, but it's hard to see. So now I can stick my whole hand in here and really smooth it out. If you don't think one little strip of ATG on the side is gonna do it, then put two really close to each other and get that back sealed up real white, nice and tight, okay? So now there is your accordion album. Check it out. So like I said, if you feel that that's not gonna hold it, which it's holding it pretty good, do two, do more. If you wanna completely stick it down, that's up to you, but you're gonna lose some of the elasticity as far as being able to put more pictures than you know, or more of whatever you want to put in here. I'm getting a lot of cool messages from you guys. Thank you so much. You're like, oh, this will be good for, you know, things other than pictures, recipes. Um, one gal said um, her um, sewing patterns. That'd be really nice. You just got to make it a little bit wider, I think. Um, it'd be perfect. So, I mean, there it is, guys. So what I'm going to do is, with this front piece, is if your little leftover piece that you have from your 12 by 12 that you had cut, is wide enough and you can get your whatever you want to use for this piece here uh, to be your closure and um, use it if not then you're gonna have to probably get another piece of chipboard to bring out to use that like this it's just a little bit too small but I do have some leftover from the other day for from a different project I'll be using but you still are gonna need these leftover pieces okay um, to make a space between the background and your um, your um, closure, okay? Because when you slip it in here, you're gonna need something at least twice as thick as of the chipboard to be able to slide it in, okay? So we're gonna be using those pieces anyway. But for right now, uh, you know, I was going through my stuff. I mean, you can use any Sizzix or whatever's gonna cut chipboard the thin, you know, the nicest. Even on the edge dive, you have just a little piece of square, but you wanna make it kind of cute to cut the little scallop off of it. Um, cut a flower shape, I mean, if you wanted to use that. Whatever it is you wanna use, I'm gonna use this Tim Holtz styled labels and I think the last time I used this one on that last project but this one's kind of a little bit more cryptic looking kind of scary looking so I think this will be fun for this style album that I just made and this is a piece that from the other day that I, I just had left over so I'm probably going to use this and I'm just going to cut it down a little bit and run that through my cuddle bug And you also have to cut um, pattern paper or something that you want to uh, layer over that, or cardstock or whatever it is. If you're gonna, you know, make a a different kind of little label, and you probably want cardstock so you can do what you want. I'm just gonna use pattern paper. So hopefully, 
that, run that through. And here's my little piece that's going to end up being my closure. And let me choose just another piece of paper. Hmm. I'm looking at the style of my box and I don't know what I want to put there. Um, you know, I'll go with this. Why not? It's a little bit busy, but we can use that. The, the paper that I had cut up originally. And I'll take a little piece of that. And that might actually end up being... I see how I want to line this up, sorry. I'm trying to make some choices here. Oops. Okay. And we are almost done. First of all, you know what it was? Is that sewing that I had to go get ready and it took so long and it takes a little bit longer than you than you think. Okay. So that's cute, the way I, I cut the that little part that had the trees and things. And I think I'll use that side. I was gonna use this side, but I think it's gonna be too busy. So I'll use this and then I'm gonna add some like flowers, some black flowers or something cool like that to go kind of around there. So I just wanna line this up, make sure everything's set the way I like it. Looks good. And again, all oh, this guy's coming. I like this liquid glass because it dries very fast. But um, I want to go all the way to the edges, making sure all that's going to get sealed in real nice. And I'll cross the body of that. And like I said, if you have something else you like to use, especially a glue stick or something like that, that would be better. But um, this is going to work just fine. I'm going to push the glue out towards the edges. And then I'll also push whatever error that might be under there out towards the edges. So you want to get it out of there. And it's a little bit off. Let me budge with that a little bit more. Okay. So I just put a lot of glue on there. I didn't mean to, but there we are. And then before I stick that down, I'm going to take that and my black ink. And I'm going to do a little distressing around the edges. And I want to use the black ink because it has like the Halloween theme. And use whatever color you'd like or whatever you want to do on yours. It's a different theme. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let me close up just a bit because what you're going to do with the little bits that you have left over are cut like two pieces that are going to fit behind this thing. And not too big because um, for me I wanted to stack them in a way that it's not real visible out there back there, okay? So I'm just cutting two pieces of this chipboard and that's going to make it two thicknesses and what I'm going to do is glue them together again ATG or whatever you want to use I'll use this to stick them together for now and you're going to try to stick them perfectly together and this is just a little strip that was left over on my paper once when I cut the five and a half by six and a half inch pieces it had left like a little um, one inch piece that's what this is and then ATG or liquid glass, whatever it is that you want to use, I'm going to put more on here. I get a whole lot. If you want to use hot glue, that's up to you. Whatever it is that you think is going to hold the best, because this is what's going to hold your uh, box closed. And you kind of want to line it up just right in the middle of your piece, okay? I don't want to do this too quickly. I would give this all time to dry. If you're using ATG, it doesn't need time to dry, of course. But what you're going to do after this is bring your box over. This is my top flap. I am so happy with the way this came out. Um, let me back up just a little bit. It's a fun project. I mean, it doesn't take too long, right? But um, So butt it up so that, you know, if it was closed, it would be just like this. And then I'm going to have this little piece here. Now, if that's not enough, the two pieces that you put, add a third piece. I think it should be okay. And the thing is I had added that last piece of um, cardstock and the cardstock is a little bit thicker than I like. So let me add one more piece of the, uh, what's that called? Chipboard. I just eyeballed that, not too bad. 
again, if your thick board, your thick board, your chipboard's really thick, you're gonna also add, you know, the same amount, like two or three thicknesses of it. Okay, here's another one. I'll let that dry a little bit. And basically, once this dries, you're gonna glue it down um, in the direction that you want it. I want it to be up this way. And that should be better. You want it to be kind of comfortable. It's far away enough that you can tuck this in without it kind of pulling away from your box. You don't really want too much of that. And then as you kind of look into the side, you're going to be able to see kind of where you need to stick this down so that this flap can tuck in right behind it. And, and then that's where you're going to glue it down. So let me see if that was there. I'm going to see as far as how much, about that much. Okay, so I'm kind of eyeballing that, and I'm going to try to keep it there as much as I can. And it's pretty much right here is where it was. So I'm going to place my glue. I'll probably do the rest of the embellishing if I do any more off camera because um, it's getting late in the day. I want to post this, and my kids are going to be getting home from school, or my son is, and my other one is already awake. So just kind of center it again. I kept my finger where it was, so I kind of know far as that and I'm gonna let that dry and your box is good to go if you were gonna put a tag or a label for sure put it there some little flowers like I'll probably end up doing and um, we're all done so thanks for watching and I hope you guys like the tutorial and I will have some still pictures for you right after this